In the 1800s, Toronto had private horse-drawn stagecoach services, which were later replaced by electric streetcars. The Toronto Railway Company operated most of the street railway system until 1921, when the Toronto Transportation Commission was established. The TTC took over streetcar, interurban, and seasonal ferry service and established Grey Coach Line's intercity bus service. Motor buses, including open air double deckers and the Peter Witt streetcars, were introduced. During the Great Depression, TTC ridership dropped. Maintenance and construction projects were fast-tracked to keep people employed and reduce operating costs. The first rear-engine buses were added in 1937. President's Conference Committee, or PCC, streetcars were introduced. During the Second World War, many TTC employees left to join the war effort. The TTC manufactured marine engine and artillery parts. Hundreds of women joined the workforce for the first time as shop workers and transit operators. The TTC guides were introduced to sell tickets and provide information at busy transfer points. Gas and tire restrictions forced Torontonians out of their personal vehicles and onto public transit. The 1950s were a time of growth for Toronto, the suburbs and the TTC. The Toronto Transportation Commission was renamed the Toronto Transit Commission and its service area expanded sevenfold with the creation of Metropolitan Toronto. The first subway in Canada, Line 1 from Union to Eglinton stations, opened in 1954. Tokens were introduced. A modern bus design, the new look, first appeared in 1959. The 60s saw more development in the suburbs and high-density apartment blocks in the city. Line 1 was extended from Union to St. George stations in 1963. Line 2, from Woodbine to Keele, opened in 1966 and was later extended to Islington and Warden. The Toronto Island ferries were transferred back to the city and many Peter Witt and PCC streetcars were retired. In the 1970s, Women were employed as operators for the first time since the Second World War, and Wheeltrans was introduced. The subway was extended to York Mills, and later to Finch, and from St. George to Wilson in 1978. The Canadian light rail vehicle streetcars were placed in service. Throughout the 1980s, TTC service expanded to meet increasing ridership. Line 2 was extended to Kennedy and Kipling, and the Scarborough RT, now known as Line 3, opened. Articulated light rail vehicles were put into service. The unlimited monthly MetroPass was introduced. A groundbreaking report, Choices for the Future, outlined a plan to provide accessible transit. A recession in the early 1990s led to a decline in ridership. Line 1 was extended from Wilson to Downsview, now known as Shepherd West. New subway trains had accessible features, like wider doors and a revised seating layout. Low floor, accessible buses rolled out. In the 2000s, the TTC focused on maintaining the state of good repair. Service improvements led to increased ridership, setting an all-time record during World Youth Day. Line 4 was completed. The TTC purchased the Toronto rocket trains and low-floor streetcars. 
and TTC made its first entry in Toronto's annual Pride Parade. In the last decade, the regional Presto Fair Card was introduced, marking the start of the TTC's largest fair change in history. Recently completed projects include revitalizing Queen's Key West, transit priority along King Street, and the Line 1 extension to Vaughan Metropolitan Center. 52 subway stations were accessible by the end of 2019. The rollout of low-floor streetcars made all TTC vehicles accessible. In 2020, countries around the world experienced the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. TTC ridership dropped by 60%. As the TTC enters a new decade, and as we celebrate a century of service, the people who operate, maintain, and support Toronto's transit system will continue to keep the city moving. This video is dedicated to the TTC employees, past and present, without whose commitment this story could not be told. The Toronto Transit Commission, a century of service.